What is the science behind God rays? In real life, there are two necessary elements for light rays to become visible. First, we need light. And second, we need particles in the air, something like dust or smoke to illuminate the light path. Without these particles, light rays would not be visible. Interestingly, the process of creating God rays in Blender requires the same two ingredients as in real life, especially when it comes to the Cycles render engine. To get started, we need a light source. Let's add an area light and place it right behind the window. As for the dust particles, our best bet is to perform some volumetric shader magic, and the first thing we need for this is an object to act as the container. So let's add a cube and scale it up to fill the entire room, which immediately blocks our view. This is a problem, so let's find a way to see through the cube without having to hide it. Simple enough, we can go to the Properties tab of the cube and set the viewport display as wire. To imitate the particles, with the cube selected, let's go to the Materials tab and create a new one. Remove the default principle shader, and instead open up the Volume section and add a Volume Scatter shader. And it seems like we have something here, but maybe just a little bit too much. So let's try turning down the density. This is better, but still, the rays don't look as sharp as I had hoped for. Let's see if I can play around with the settings to give the rays more contrast. After trying out many different settings, I think I have found the solution. During my attempts, what I notice is that if I go to the light settings and set the number of bounces to zero, I can get the light to only illuminate its pathway, but not the surrounding area in the room. So now, my hypothesis is to leave this bounce value at zero and bump up the intensity of the light to get extremely bright rays. And to light up the rest of the room in a way that is consistent with the rays, I can duplicate the current light object, take the new one, revert back the number of bounces to the default value, and drop down the intensity, which gives us this. And I think we can all agree that the result is quite satisfactory. The key point here is that by matching the position, size, and orientation of the two light objects, we have managed to make them look like a single light source. And while this turned out to be a rather easy solution, it has caused a slight problem in our workflow. That is, every time we make a change to one of the lights, we need to do the same to the other. I don't like this because it slows down my workflow. It would be nice if we could connect the two lights and make them move simultaneously. So you might ask, Sina, can you tell us how to do this in your deepest voice? And to that I say, of course. All you need to do is take the second light and make it a child of the first one. And don't forget to reset the transforms of the child. If you have found this tutorial useful, I think you might also like this next video. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.